Good morning and welcome to Live in a Greenhouse on YouTube. If you're new here, this channel is about my journey to design, build, and then live in the first greenhouse enclosed tiny home in the United States. Here I cover the month by month reality of what's involved in setting up and living in a home inside a greenhouse. Being the last Sunday of the month, today is the May walk around. This month's high temperatures outside have ranged from 55 to 75 degrees. This is my second spring living here full time, so I'm still learning how to manage the various systems for heat control. The ridge vents are usually open 7 by 24, and by opening the doors on each end, the inside temperature may go above 80 on a sunny day or to the 70s on a cloudy day like yesterday. Except the week I had to go to Seattle for work. With the doors closed, the inside temp spiked at 96 degrees. Or on May 16th, I closed the ridge fence in the afternoon due to high winds that blew stuff into the greenhouse and one of the pictures off the wall. Inside temp on that day reached 70 degrees. I usually have all the doors and windows from the house open to the greenhouse all day. And then in the evening, I close all the doors and windows except the bedroom door to the greenhouse. Without having to worry about wind, rain, and animals, I leave that door open all night. You may remember one of the big projects for April was starting to refill the pool from the rainwater tanks after patching a leak at the corner by the ladder. I was going very slowly to hold at each level for a few days to check for leaks. While May was another exceptionally dry month, April 30th was the last date I felt comfortable using water from the tanks in the pool, and then there was no measurable rain in May until this week. Even so, it totaled only about 750 gallons per tank. So spoiler alert, there was no progress on the pool this month. But come along today to see what growth the warm weather has brought on. It was just enough rain this month for the spring explosion of growth that I had to get out the string trimmer along the driveway and the parking areas. But we're starting to see fawns around the island, so I'm leaving the grass tall on the drain field for nesting. Pulled weeds, but didn't get the horse manure spread, so didn't get the seeds spread. My property is ringed with tall evergreens that I didn't want to cut down just for the greenhouse, so there's always cleanup after a windstorm. This is another peak year for tent caterpillars. I don't have any fruit trees outside the greenhouse, but they seem to congregate on the railing and climb on the greenhouse. So far, I've found only a few inside. Trimmed along the greenhouse to be ready for placing the ladder to pressure wash the roof once there's enough water in the rain tanks. Pressure washing the deck is still on the to-do list. Bloom is done on the ajuga. 
I'm going to take a few days off work next week. Maybe I can get this manure pile moved and check that off the list. A couple locals doing the dine and dash. This working end of the greenhouse tends to accumulate odds and ends that I tried to tidy up a bit to mow before carting material up the hill. The bird spikes seem to be working. No new droppings on the wall or door. Mostly a variety of thistles over here to keep cut so they don't go to seed. A bit of debris in the traps from the windstorm last week. It ain't pretty. But this is the working food garden end of the greenhouse, and this month's story is mulch, at least around everything planted. There are still a few bare spots left to be planted. I'm trying sunflowers in a few locations. This one is a volunteer. The peach tree has so many fruit that even though they're still small and immature, this area smells like peaches. A few leaves have these markings. Please let me know in the comments if you know what this is from. More sunflowers. These get a few hours of sun around noon and then a few more hours in the late afternoon. The water was just over the edge from the pool to the pond before I stopped adding water April 30th. With evaporation and using some of the water for the peach tree, it's down to about 23 inches. Air pumps on each end keep the water moving so mosquitoes don't breed. Got a couple strawberry flavor bombs this month. Still watching the sucker from the peach tree's rootstock to see if it's anything useful. Powdery mildew was a big problem last year that I never got ahead of, so I'm diligently watching for it this year. I hit these cucumbers with potassium bicarbonate this week. Since it's on the cucumbers, the tomatoes wouldn't be far behind, so I sprayed them also. Repotted asparagus seedlings into larger pots for now. This is fern leaf dill. Looks like the bok choy likes it here, so I'll probably sow more seeds this month. Volunteer potato in a cage to allow more sun and air to reach radishes, which should be ready to start harvesting soon. My first time growing lavage, so I'm trying it in a couple places. This corner is not only the shadiest part of the garden due to the trees to the south and west, but these tubes are the exhaust for the air-to-ground tubes under the food garden, putting out air cooler than the ambient air. Radishes and kohlrabi around the tubes. Still some space between the radishes and peas. Pea harvest started last week. Another lavage in a slightly sunnier and warmer area. These Purple Queen and Provider both did very well last year despite all the challenges, so I'm trying them again this year. Last month, they'd just broken the surface. Looks like they'll flower soon. Rainbow Carrot Mix Direct Zone in this open area. Finally warm enough for the watermelon to do something. 
I grew both of these lettuce last year in a slightly sunnier area, but this year they're doing much better. More asparagus in pots, but these are towed into the soil. Leaks around the outside. Thai basil. More sunflowers. This time last month, they'd just broken the surface. Flowers on the tomato. Genevieve's basil. More leeks. Lemon balm. By mid-month, all of the volunteer spinach had bolted, so I pulled them. Now there are bunching onions on the left and leeks on the right. Not sure what I'll put in the middle. I moved the calamondin from under the peach tree to here so it gets more sun and guides the hose around the edge of the bed. I'm growing several fennel so I can eat some as bulbs and leave some for seeds. This is the olive tree's second year but only moved to this location a few months ago and look at all the new growth, including olive buds. Nothing new at the potting bench. It's still a loosely organized mess. I'm continuing to fill in the ornamental beds. I got a 12th pack of pansies for half price, so why not? A couple of the volunteer wildflowers are now blooming. These bulbs are done for the year. These dianthus were neglected during construction and froze over the winter, but seem to like this place. This is the columbine's first year from seed, so not expecting flowers, but looking good for flowers next year. Bees like this Raleigh's favorite, so I'll wait a bit longer before deadheading it. Cilantro was on sale. White sage, nasturtiums, and godetia. I'm hoping to train these bay laurel into twining trunks. Portulaca seedlings spread between the larger plants. Dianthus, basil. I've companion planted calendula in several places as a trap plant, and it seems to be doing the job. About half are covered in aphids that aren't on anything else. Except the lavender and rosemary, this bed was direct sown seeds that had just emerged or had just their first leaves last month. Looking good except a bit of powdery mildew on the rosemary that I've sprayed with neem and potassium bicarbonate. Nasturtiums, orage, godetia, coneflower, catnip, and lavender. Some seedlings had been sheared off with what looked like slime, and I was sure meant slugs, but my sister didn't believe it could be slugs. I won.
he lost. Lemon balm. Another aphid trap calendula. White sage. Oregano. A month's dead lavender. And since none of my parsley seeds sprouted, a store bought parsley. Nasturtiums and continuing to fill in this bed with more of the half price pansies, oregano, and primroses. Nothing new with the East Palm this month. And no progress clearing out the accumulation of stuff in this corner. And there you have it. Another month of the reality of preparing the greenhouse space you don't see in the stories about the other greenhouse enclosed homes around the world. It may not be pretty, but I love that this is my view anyway. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share with your friends. And come back next time to see how I deal with the full heat of summer.